Kim Stadler again. Oh man, why ask? Why'd you ask about Jesus? Why? Okay, I'm going to entertain that at the risk of at the risk of offending some. Okay, many of you know from my past videos, hardcore Christian. I used to argue against Muslims. I used to enter debates. I used to even do like in the prison version of TED Talks. We have those in there. Very very heated. There are guys in prison that will surprise you with their intellect. So. I used to do all that. Then I read a, then I read a series of books by John Waite. Uh, Charles, excuse me, I'm sorry, Charles Waite, put out in the 1880s. And I read Gerald Massey's lectures from the 1870s and 1880s. And I had absolutely no idea that this research had been conducted and it cited over 400 different historical texts. And it just blew my mind when I started reading all these texts from Tashin and, Tace and, and Tacitus and Jerome and... I read. Uh, I already. I had already read Augustus, but I had no idea that scholars had broken down and analyzed all of Augustus stuff and, sh and showed over over two hundred forgeries in his books and and showed the proof where the where the where this material came from ancient sources. But he changed the authors and the dates. So I'm like, man, what is this? I can't believe this. And there was a complete breakdown of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And all the historical documents that were in existence in the 1st century B.C., the 1st century A.D., the 2nd century A.D., and the 3rd century A.D., a full itemization of every single document that had ever been translated from the Latin and the Greek that existed in those times that have been discovered by archaeologists and historians in, in secret libraries and Vatican archives and all that. And the, this book I'm talking about is over 600 page, pages. It's called The First 200 Years of Christianity. And it is by, it is by Charles Waite. And when I read about it, it shocked me. It shows proof after proof after proof after proof meant that the story of Jesus was absolutely unknown. Everything about the miracle worker and all that stuff was a man named Apollonius of Tyana, and he was well known, and he was a Greek, and he did travel, and he did speak in parables, and he, and he did do some healings and stuff like that, but he was 100% not Jewish, and the story seems to have taken on a life of its own. Now, he might have been the Christ, and we might have it all wrong. Apollonius of Tyana was, was, was what he went by in the historical record. 300 years later, the church had Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But before Matthew, Mark, and Luke, John, there is a Q document. That Q document, according to scholars, is the mysterious source material from which Matthew, Mark, and Luke came from. John did not. John came from an alternate source. It is a Gnostic text, like, like many of the Nag Hammadi library texts. The book of John is unlike Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It does not have parallels with Matthew, Mar Matthew Mark, and Luke. It is, it, is almost all, it, is mo it is almost all in symbols of the Gnosis, which was a very strong religious movement at the time before Christianity even exploded onto the scene. So, it's a fundamental tenet of the Gnosis that we live, do live in an artificial reality and that it is controlled by an evil being called the Demiurge and that there is a savior, Syashuant, he is coming. Uh, Christianity borrowed many of these and they came from the the, uh, the uh, Avenda, Azenda Vesta or some I can't remember, ancient Iranian prophecies. But those were just older Israelite prophecies because that's where they got them from And when the Israelites were in captive and they brought those elements of their belief systems with them. Now, Concerning Jesus is very interesting because the breakdown of all these scholars and all these ancient records, which you, you don't even see them in Christian literature today. They don't even want to talk about these, these major scholarly projects that were undergoing 1870s, 1880s, 1890s, and early 19, early in the 20th century. But they proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that Matthew, Mark, and Luke came from a Q document, and they have identified that Q document. It's called the Gospel of Marcion. Marcion was a Turkish navigator in the days when Jesus was supposed to have lived. And he came into possession of a story about a man. And this, he begin, the story begins when the man is 30 years old. And for three years, he had the most fascinating teachings. He spoke in parables. He, he, he didn't claim to have come from any, any, anywhere extraordinary, but the Jews were at war with him. They did not like him. Their problems with him were racial, not doctrinal. They kept accusing him, saying, hey, man, you're not one of us. You're not one of us. How can you teach us? You can't come to the temple and, te and teach, man. You're a Samaritan. So the Jews racially identified themselves as totally separate from Jesus in the Gospel of Marcion. Interestingly, in the Gospel of Marcion, there is no virgin birth. That is the old, that's pretty much the old pagan sun god. 
25 different pre-Christian gods are all said to be born on 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 uh, December 25th, and the star, and the three kings, and the three magi. These are all elements borrowed from the old Babylonian system. But in the Gospel of Markion, there's none of that. It's a pure spiritual document, it's pure spiritual parables and teachings, and it's phenomenal. It's everything you read, basically, in the book of Mark, in the book of Matthew, and in the book of Luke, minus the virgin birth. Minus a single miracle. Minus the mythological overtones. Minus the sun darkening Phoenix episode, which they borrowed from other historical texts because it didn't happen in 33. Phoenix wasn't even here anywhere near the time of 33. It wouldn't even appear for 70 more years. But they borrowed it from old Phoenix records that were very popular in the first, in the first century AD, thanks to Pliny 100 years before that. Now, the Gospel of Marcion has no crucifixion no Judas episode. All of those elements were added by the church later when they composed the book of Mark. And then using, by adding all these elements in the book of Mark, they then embellished more when they wrote the book of Matthew. And then from Matthew was born the book of Luke. A hundred years later, they presented them to the public as three separate gospels. And they totally eliminated all references to the Gospel of Marcion. Now, John was a Gnostic doc composition, just like it was probably came from the Nag Hammadi collection itself, but it was highly rewritten in many different places. I don't believe that our version of Jesus is true because God doesn't need to do all those things to save, save humanity, nor do I believe that humanity needs saving. I do not believe anymore that humanity in the collective is guilty of anything. I believe that we are victims. And I have mentioned this many times in my videos, and I even itemize those reasons why. I don't believe in sin doctrine. I don't believe in any of that. All these self-imposed dictates and religious, they are absolutely fascinating in, in studying them, but they're control mechanisms. They're designed to control you. And if, you, and if you fall prey to them, like I did for 40 years of my life, that's fine. It doesn't really change who you are spiritually. I don't believe that there's any type of eternal ramifications that are going to attach to us for falling prey to the deceptions, because this entire simulacrum is a deception of the demiurge. This entire predator versus prey ecosphere that we live in, and we think that a creator built, is not. It's a false reality with all kinds of modifications like the predator versus prey, where animals tear into other animals while they're screaming in an agony to, to drink their blood, lick their blood, eat their, eat their flesh, and then feed it to their young. I says, in the real universe, these things aren't, these, these types of sustenance isn't necessary. It isn't even, this is, this is all a part of the God of this world, the demiurge, the evil one, call him the adversary, call him Satan, call him whatever you want. But, uh, I don't need a Jesus to be spiritual being. And that's what I take out of that. I am fascinated with the Gospel of Mark. John. I'm fascinated with, with when I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and I do. I go back and I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now I do it and I see it and I gain from it because the parables are very spiritual. The real creator cannot communicate to us things in frames of reference that are, have anything to do with this physical world, which is a product of the evil one the demiurge. Instead, he speaks to us through intuition, flashes of imagination, through parables, metaphors, similes, coincidence, even Mandela effect. These are the ways that the true creator, this great spirit, communicates to us. And we feel them all the time. There are many times that we feel our spirits soar and we can't, we can't do anything wrong. We're not worried about anything in the world. Those are, those are times, man, when our spirit is vibrating in tune with things that are beyond this simulacrum, beyond this world. Because this world is saturated with 100% pure negativity.